very important thing that hiring managers are looking for is your enthusiasm and your energy level those candidates who tailor fit their resumes according to that their chances of getting hired is more reflect the three c's during the interview which is cool calm and confident <music> Audible and you are able to view the screen. All right, thank you, Karan. So, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the live webinar on interview skills. I am ACC Disha Chauhan, a proud Fin Trammer. So, just to give you a background, I have worked previously in two of the big fours. I am, of course, an ACCA member and, you know, associated with Fin Tram Global, wherein I mentor and teach students around the world, of course, various subjects of ACCA. So coming to today's topic, interview skills, of course, in your life, whenever you know you will be going, um, you know, when you will be going out for looking a for a job, you will have to face an interview, right? So interview skills are, of course, very important uh, part of your life. And even though, let's say you have had given interviews in the past, or let's say you have had jobs in the past, every time you go for an interview, you would have some sort of anxiety. Even now, if even I have to go for an interview, I will be also anxious, right? But how you can improve, uh, that is something you need to work on. Because uh, when I started, when I, I can remember when I gave my first interview, from then till now, of course, I've come out long way and there are a few things that one needs to note so in today's webinar of course we'll discuss about the do's and don'ts i'll of course share some tips with you i'll share with you what exactly are the hiring managers looking for and of course i'll share with you some tips on how you can ask the most uh, answer the most asked questions because these questions you will definitely you know Somewhere around, you will see uh, these kind of questions coming in your interview. And what happens is that we get nervous and we are not able to answer those questions well, even if uh, we think we know the answer. All right. So without wasting any time, let's start. And I welcome you all. All right. So let's start firstly by talking about what exactly are hiring managers looking for. So the first and a very important thing is your ability to communicate. Communication skills are, of course, a very important part. Wherever you're going to work, even if it's a job wherein you don't, you know, require to communicate on a daily basis per se, let's say if you were going for a sales job, of course, you need to have great communication skills. Oh, other than that, if let's say it was some other sort of a role, let's say maybe you are in technology or IT department, wherein you really didn't have to communicate to the outside world so much. But still, you know, your manager will look at your communication skill that you need to have at least the basic communication skills. So when we say your ability to communicate, what exactly are we saying? We're saying that you're able to tell your stories and experiences, right? For example, Let's say your hiring managers ask you a question that, you know, tell me about a time where you faced some difficulty in a project or they'll say that, Disha, tell me uh, your most challenging project. So when a question like this is asked, I should be able to communicate my experience, my story properly. So first and foremost, I need to have that ready that, okay, if something like this is asked, I need to be prepared that what was the most challenging uh, you know, project. So I need to have a story ready. Then when I'm communicating this story, I need to keep in mind few things. What are those things? Firstly, if I did not act in the way that I should uh, or I did, then what negative impact it would have had on the project or on profits, whatever. And I will tell my action points, what I did, what I did right, and the positive impact that had like what exactly in the end how everything was fine you know there were some challenges but how I overcame that having said that that you are telling a story or experience what you need to keep in mind is that you are just not going on and on about it right you need to see that all right I have to tell a story where I am describing a challenging project or a situation so I need to tell a story I need to tell what negative could have happened I need to tell how positively I you know 
overcame that but at the same time i can't just go on on about it because the interviewer will lose interest but it is important that whatever experience story or emotion that you're showing you're able to communicate that well that the interviewer is able to feel that and is listening to you and you know is not just going in another direction or not paying attention because it has become so boring or you're dragging it second very important thing that hiring managers are looking for is your enthusiasm and your energy level you need to be positive you need to be friendly you know you need to showcase that yes you are helpful that if you would work in a team you will be able to help your teammates that you are a friendly person that you are positive because nobody likes someone who will speak let's say ill of that company so if let's say you left a company due to xyz reason never bash that previous company whatever happened in the past or whatever you know bad things happened to you if you in the new company where you're going for an interview if you will tell all of that that okay my manager was bad or this happened that happened you are showcasing some of that that you are holding grudges you are sort of a negative thinking person so you need to make sure that you are presenting yourself to be a positive person and you're showing enthusiasm that yes i am interested for that job then the third thing is that they are of course looking for that are you really fit for that company and the culture now fit basically means how well you are going to be matching for that particular team that company or that particular role that the company is looking for so of course companies have a job description wherein they tell that what are the roles one would have what are the responsibilities one would have so once you prepare your resume right and this is something that i always suggest to all the people out there that people usually have one resume ready and they just send it out to all the companies you know these days companies have they publish especially if you are on linkedin you would see that companies publish okay this is the role this is the responsibility this is the job description so those candidates who tailor fit their resumes according to that their chances of getting hired is more so if the job description or the role responsibility says that you need to be very good at communication make sure you're putting that in your resume that okay in this project uh, i did this my communication is great or if they are asking for that you need to be let's say great at excel make sure you are telling that on your resume because then only they'll be able to see that you're fit for the company and culture only when that crosses they'll call you for the interview and of course in the interview also you need to make sure you would have read the job description you have read what are the roles responsibilities so make sure in your answers you are including that and selling sort of that all right so the fourth thing that they want to know is you can do the job so like i said the job description is not just merely given for the sake of it that okay this is the job come and just do it no you may have to make sure that you are able to you know understand from that that what exactly they are asking you and are you you know do you really think you can do that of course there will be few things maybe one or two things which you are not sure about but you can in the interview if they ask about that particular thing you can always tell them that you know i don't know that uh, i'm not too sure about it but i am going to work on it and i'm willing to work on it right so again you need to show that positive attitude you need to show your energy enthusiasm the fifth one is that they want to know that you genuinely want this job yes if you are going to be very disinterested in the interview not giving answers properly it's going to come across that you are not really interested in the job and of course in that case the hiring manager is not going to you know pa- um, make sure that you go through the second round or if it's the final round so they want to know that you genuinely want this job but at the same time this doesn't mean you show your desperation that oh i desperately want this job no it is a very subtle way of showing that yes i'm interested uh, and i really want to work with the company i'm really you know looking forward to work in this company and i've read the job description and i really feel i am fit for this job but at the same time you can't go desperate that oh i need a job because i've been you know not able to get a job from past few months or a year or so so these are the few things that of course the hiring managers are looking for and that something you we must take a note on that we need to c- communicate in a you know way that they are uh, you know sort of listening to our story our experience and we are not making it too super boring or dragging it we of course need to be having a 
energy level enthusiasm not overly enthusiastic but maintaining our level and need to be positive and of course make sure of the other things all right let's now move on to the tips for a successful interview so these are some seven tips uh, of course there are so many other things but top seven things which i would say first one is of course dress for the job or company even if it's an online interview or it's a face to face interview dress for the job it is important that you are formally dressed you know whether you're wearing your suit blazer suit or you're wearing a collar shirt with tie formal pants formal shoes shoes should be polished you know you need to make sure of all that if it's an online interview make sure that you are well groomed and don't just assume that okay doesn't matter uh, you know it's just a video call so make sure your dress for the job speak the truth always speak the truth don't think that oh i'll just lie about it and i'll look super cool and the interviewer is going to think that oh i know so much no always speak the truth if you do not know something it's fine tell them that oh i'm sorry i'm not really aware at this moment about it but speak the truth in your past let's say if you are a fresher and in your college you have never let's say participated in any of the events that happen so don't just cook up a story and say oh that i am very outgoing you know i participated in so many events because you know i've seen this happening people do that and when the interviewer cross questions on those things they can make out that the person was telling a lie because then they are not able to think of an answer very quickly so always speak the truth if you have al already worked in a previous organization and you are going for interview in an another organization and if they ask you something related to particular work that are you well versed with this sort of tool or anything if you do not know that tell them don't lie never lie on either your resume or even in an interview then the third one is always close your interview on a positive and enthusiastic note when the interview is over just don't be like okay thank you and just don't leave the room right always tell them that thank you so much for taking out your time it was a pleasure uh, speaking to you and i look forward to hearing from you and all of that you know don't just end it and just rush off that okay it's over let me just go always end it on a positive note and show your enthusiasm show that yes i am interested in this job fourth one is don't talk too much there are some people who talk a lot a interviewer will ask a question and they would expect that you just answer that question quickly it's just nothing you know too fancy that you have to answer it um or talk a lot about it but some people are of course talkative by nature so they will just keep on talking on it and of course the interviewer is not going to really appreciate that so don't talk too much talk to the point whatever question they are asking answer that but just don't talk a lot that if even if you have many stories to tell that doesn't mean you will just keep on talking fifth is use appropriate language you are in going for an interview in a corporate world you are not talking to your friends or relatives so you can't really use slangs or you know abbreviations as such so talk in an appropriate language make sure uh, you know check your grammar of course sixth one is ask question and this is something which we are going to cover in this sessions also in the last part that you know what questions you should ask and it should be around what but this is very important after the interview is done the interviewer usually ask do you have any questions sir roma and many people say that no thank you so much uh, you know i don't have any questions don't do that always ask questions because when you ask a question it seems like that you are actually interested in the job and you really want to know more so definitely always ask questions seventh one is reflect the three c's during the interview which is cool calm and confident in the beginning of the session like i said you know during an interview everyone is going to be anxious even today if i also go for an interview i'll be a little anxious and nervous which is fine you need to be a little anxious and nervous but don't be too nervous because it won't be the end of the world you are not going to clear every interview in your life that's a fact and the chances that you will clear your first interview are actually very low you will learn from your experiences maybe after giving four or five tens of interviews you might clear an interview so don't think that oh i didn't clear one interview oh my god my life is over now what will happen and in the second interview then you become more nervous that oh i have to clear this interview no it's not the end of the world so remain cool remain calm if you have you know the qualifications necessary 
then you need to be confident and show that then why are you worried right so remain cool calm and of course confident in the interview like i said you are going to be a little bit nervous anxious and that is absolutely fine but don't showcase that showcase like you are very confident and you are absolutely calm all right moving to the do's and don'ts so firstly we'll talk about the do's the things that you should be doing you need to be on time and by on time i don't mean that if the interview is on 5 pm be there by at 5 pm no you need to be early actually be on time of course when you are entering that you are on time but you need to be early at least i would say 15 to 20 minutes uh, of course in advance see where you have to go for an interview how much time it will take the traffic and all of that if it's really far maybe reach even 30 minutes before if it's an online interview make sure 5 10 minutes if it's on zoom you have joined 5 10 minutes before the host might join later that's fine but you need to be early so be on time bring several copies of res your resume don't just assume that oh i emailed them my resume so it's fine always keep copies of your resume with yourself and not just one or two you don't know how many people might there be in the interview panel so keep several copies you know usually i would say 5 to 6 number is a good number do your homework whichever company you applied for and they have called you for your interview you need to know some basic things about their company right today's world we have google we have the internet it really will take you 15 to i would say 30 minutes to even do a thorough check because everything is available on the internet you just have to type the company's name you have to see okay it's there in whichever locations part of the world roughly how many employees are there what are all the departments you know the company is old like it's been there for 20 years 30 years or is it a startup so do your homework you need to know about the company you know i'm not saying that you need to know everything about it that uh, who founded it and uh, the founder uh, year when it was founded but at least the basic things that okay this many year old this is what they do these many countries they are in this is the departments generally you should of course know the company listen carefully to the interviewer yes this is very important whatever the interviewer is asking uh, you know you have to listen to it carefully what happens is usually sometimes the interviewer asks some things and you don't know that right and you say okay i don't know and then you just feel that oh i didn't know this uh, oh my god now what will happen and then he's asking the second question but you're not listening to him because you're just thinking about the previous question that oh i could not answer that now what will happen no whatever happened forget it move on move quickly on so you need to listen carefully to the interviewer what is he saying what is he asking if he is describing something make sure you are listening to him you know uh show that yes you're keenly listening to it maintain good eye contact during the interview yes what happens sometimes students or people even with experience during an interview they will look here there down no don't do that always maintain a good eye contact but not in a weird way that you're just staring down the interviewer don't do that you know of course you're going to blink at times but uh, when you're speaking to the interviewer make sure you're looking at him or her and talking to them with a smile and you know maintaining a good eye, eye contact is of course very important then be honest and be yourself you know if you think fake it till you make it is going to work i don't think so you need to be honest and be yourself because at the end of the day when you start working and let's say you lied about few things and then you know it's going to affect your work they going to expect you to do something which you will not be because you lied on your resume or maybe on your interview so be honest just be yourself and you should be fine then what is the other do is that you need to sit still in your seat that is you should avoid any fidgeting or slouching some people have a habit of playing with their hair so if the interviewer is asking something they'll keep on playing with their hair they'll adjust their hair don't do that keep your hands on your you know uh, below and uh, don't do anything like have it hair some people if they have a pen in the hand they'll do something with the pen or you know some people what do they do they keep on shaking their leg one leg they'll shake it don't do all of that into your notice all this and they think that okay the candidate is way too uh, nervous don't slouch sit state uh, you know sometimes we don't have the habit uh, because these days if you let's say you know you use so much of phones and laptops and we have this habit of sitting in bed so we 
tend to slouch. So make sure you're sitting properly and you're not fidgeting. You're not looking here and there. You're not doing anything with your hands, hair, you know, just let it be. Uh, and don't do all of that, of course. All right. Then moving on to the don'ts. First one is don't speak poorly about either your present or former employees. If you're already working with someone and looking for a new job, so present or if you have already left the that organization, so your former employees, don't talk bad about them. Maybe you left the job because your manager was not that great. The organization was not that great. They were not treating you well. But that doesn't mean that you start bashing now your manager, right? Because the interviewer is not your friend. You could do that with your friend, but not with the interviewer because then he's going to think, oh, he is talking so ill about that company. He might join us, not like us, and he will talk ill about us also. So don't, you know, speak poorly about them. Whatever the reason was, you can always present that reason that why I left in a more dignified manner. So don't talk poorly about your present former employers or your colleagues, anyone. Don't falsify information. Something which is very important to note. You know, students, if they are freshers, they might falsify information like, you know, they put their CGPA, that how much they scored in college or plus two. Don't put wrong marks. Don't put information which is not correct. Some employ uh, employees also do that. They worked in a past organization. They would, you know, let's say companies have various awards, right? They would have never, let's say, won an award, but they'll write, I won Employer of the Month award, this award, that award. Don't do, do all of that. Don't falsify any information. Don't speak over the interviewer. If interviewer is saying something, let him or her finish. Don't speak over them. Don't be super excited that, oh, let's say they ask something and you think, oh, I'm super excited. I know this answer. So I'll just jump on to it. No, you need to speak. Don't, you can't speak over the interviewer. Let them finish and then you speak. Let them finish. They are speaking and they'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know this. And you'll keep on going. Don't do that. Don't speak over that. Then don't treat the interview casually. You are not on a coffee date or visiting your friend. You are in an interview. So make sure you're treating it as an interview. And you know, you are formal in a formal you know, atmosphere. Even if it's a video call or an online interview, don't treat it casually. Don't give the impression that you're only interested in the salary. Of course, we all are working, you know, uh, in this for for whichever job you apply for a salary at the end we all want money everyone knows that but you can't give that impression that oh i'm only interested in this job because you're paying amazing salary or i've heard that you give really great salary and various benefits to the employees no don't give that impression even if that might be the case don't act as though you would take any job or that you are very desperate for employment. You might be, you might have been looking for a job from past few months or even a year or so, but don't act like it. Don't show that, oh, you're too desperate for that job and you will do anything for it. Just give me this job and don't show that desperation because if you're good, you will get the job. You don't need to be desperately showing that. Don't let a bad past interview hinder your current one very important and this is something which almost always happens with people you know you would have given a past interviews maybe you have interviews lined up in a week or maybe there's even a gap but what happens if you give an interview you don't give an interview so it didn't go so well and you even let's say got rejected and let's say after three four days or even a week's time you have another interview now you have since being rejected, you are, of course, might be feeling a little demotivated, but that doesn't mean that that past experience should hinder your current one because you will end up losing this interview also, right? This position also. So make sure whatever happened in the past happened, right? Even when we were in the schools or even college, whenever we give an exam and it doesn't go that well as expected, if you think about that, then the next exam is going to get ruined, right? I remember when I was in class 12, my boards exam, my accounts paper did not go as well as I wanted to because, you know, I left few of the questions because of the time constraint. But if I was just focusing on that, then my next paper would have been really, you know, I would have missed that also because when I came back, I was very upset. But I was like, you know what? It happened, it happened. Let me give my 100% in the next one. And I did that. And I scored really well. So it's all right. Whatever happened, keep that in the past. Don't let it hinder your current interview, the present one. 
All right, now I'll be sharing some tips with you how to answer the most common questions. All right, first question which you will mostly get is always tell me about yourself. Right, this is the question which almost always they would ask. you. So how should one answer this question? First is you need to give a snapshot of your work experience, right? Let's say if you have previously worked in one organization or two organizations, so just give them a snapshot that, okay, I worked in this organization. My role was this, 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 and I did this kind of work. If you have no work experience, it's fine. You can give a snapshot of your college life that, okay, I've done my qualification from this college, wherein I've achieved this. Uh, I've, uh, you know, participated in various debates, this, that, that. You can tell just briefly any experiences, qualifications that you have. Then you need to tell your mini stories, which are achievement oriented, right? That you could give any story that, okay, I did this in my college or I did this in my workplace and how I achieved a particular thing. You need to tell the employer what you know about this role. When you're telling them, you know, when they ask you this question, tell them of yourself, you need to tell them that, and I read the job description. You know, you should always say that. And, you know, since uh, you are looking for this or these are the roles and responsibilities. And I really think that, you know, I have these qualities. You know, you can include all of that. And finally, you should tell them why you're right fit for this job. You should tell them that, okay, you know, if they are looking for, let's say, uh, audit assistant role. I'm just giving an example. And let's say you are an ACC student who has cleared most of the papers. Let's say only two, three papers are left and you're going for an interview. So you can tell them that, you know, I think I'm fit for this job because even though you might be a fresher, you have no experience, but I have, you know, cleared my papers. I've done specialization in audit and I really think I'm fit for the job. I'm willing to learn on the job, but from my professional studies, I think I really have the basics, you know, cleared and all of that. So you need to tell the employer why you're right for that job. Rules. Don't talk about your personal family life. This so many times happened. Somebody asked, tell me about yourself. Even I have taken many interviews and people will stop. Oh, my name is XYZ. My mother is this. Uh, she does this. My father is working here. They are not interested in knowing that. When they say, tell me about yourself, the above points that I mentioned, they are interested in knowing that and not your personal family life. All right. They are not interested in all of that. But like I said, do tell a story, whether it's anything that you did, any achievement oriented story, anything that made an impact in that organization or even in your college. So definitely in your tell me about yourself, you should have a story. But at the same time, never ever talk about your personal family life until and unless the uh, interviewer really asks. If they ask, okay, and how many members there are in the family or what does your father do? If they ask, which mostly they would never but if they do, only then you need to mention. Otherwise, you on your own should never talk about your personal or family life. All right. Then another question, which is very, very popular, and most of the interviewers will ask this, is what are your weaknesses? Yes. And the points to note here is the main two important points. First, that your weakness is not a personality trait. Like, for example, being impatient. You can't really... Tell that that's your weakness because it's your personality trait or a strength in disguise. This happens so many times. Interview ask, what is your weakness? And the person will say, oh, I'm too hardworking. I'm too detail oriented. I work a lot. I'm a workaholic. No, your strength in disguise is not really your weakness. The interviewer knows what you're trying to do here. You're trying to show that, oh, I'm so good at it. Technically, you're just presenting your strength in another manner. So don't do that. They actually generally want to know they are not asking you if you don't have any or, you know, I'll of course tell you the tips, but don't make your strength a weakness. You know, so many people do that when they say what are your weaknesses and people will be like, oh, I'm actually very punctual and I'm very hardworking. And because of that, my teammates are like, oh, my God, you work so much. No, hardworking is not a weakness. It can never be a weakness. So your strength can and can never be a weakness. So a strength in disguise is not your weakness. A very important point to note because many people, most of the people I've seen during the interviews will put a strength as the weakness that, oh, I'm too detail-oriented or I'm too hardworking. I'm too sincere, I feel. Uh, or I'm like too punctual and you need to work on that. No, that is not your weakness. 
weakness is something that can be corrected or improved yes so weakness is something that you could eventually work on it you could improve it or you could finally correct it so what are the tips describe it in a specific context or situation you could tell that okay once i remember we were working on this project xyz something happened this was the situation you know i didn't do as required you know i misunderstood something so that you could tell it in a specific context or situation. You should highlight that weakness that tends to occur only in a certain context or situation because obviously because if it is something that happens all the time, then the employee is going to be like, oh, then, you know, this is not going to work. So make sure you're highlighting that this particular time, this thing happened and this situation, not something that happens all the time. You need to make sure you're focusing on that. Then brainstorm and make a list of your past and current concerns that you have about yourself. See, this is something that you have to decide. You can't Google it and say, what I should answer? What is my weakness? No, you need to think. You need to sit down and think that, okay, what actually is my weakness and how I can present it in a specific context or situation? If it, has, if it actually happened in a workplace, then great. If it did not, then how you could present it? So pick one current and one past weakness and develop individual stories for each. So you could just pick one current or either one past or both. So this is an option. So either pick one current weakness that you feel is there or one past weakness that happened and you need to develop some story for this and make sure you, when you're telling the story, you are highlighting that it happened in that particular context situation. And this is not something that happens all the time. All right, then moving on to what is your greatest strength? Another important question, something that, you know, often is asked. Now, what the employer wants here? They really want to see that can you really strike a balance between confidence and humility? Now, if you tell that, oh, my greatest weakness is this, 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 and you're, you know, showing too much of, you know, attitude on that or you're being too overconfident, they're not going to be liking that. So you need to stay humble and at the same time, you need to be confident because it's your strength. You, of course, you need to own it. You have to be proud about yourself, but don't be overconfident. Hiring managers also want to get a sense of how self-aware and honest you are. So they want to see that, are you really that self-aware and honest or not? When you're responding to this question, the important thing to note is definitely you need to sound humble and not arrogant or that like you're bragging. No, whatever strength you are saying, you need to tell that, you know, this is what my managers, let's say, in the past have told me. This is my strength. You can't be going like, oh, everybody thinks I'm just too good. I'm amazing at this particular thing. Then it will sound a little arrogant or you're bragging that, oh, I'm just great at this thing. You know, everybody agrees. No, you have to phrase it in a better way. You need to phrase it in a way that you sound humble, but at the same time, confident. So you need to describe a relevant experience. Let's say if you're applying for a sales job, tell about a story or a time when you helped a customer solve a problem, you know, with the solution that you provided, right? And you can tell that this is my um, strength, that I'm a very quick thinker. A problem happened, this, 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 this was the issue. You know, I solved it uh, quite quickly. So I'm a quick thinker or I'm a problem solver. So you need to describe a relevant experience. Give them specific details. You need to tell them about a time that, let's say, you closed a deal that helped you hit a percentage of your annual number. When you show those facts with them, it helps them visualize that, yes, how effective you have been. You can tell them, you know, uh, we were at this point and, you know, company let's say sales or anything there was a problem going on and i was able to crack a deal and because of that our annual revenue increased and you know uh, my bosses really appreciated me for that time so give them some specific details so they can see that okay uh, uh they will also visualize that okay this might have really happened show them that you are a well-rounded person for example share a story of when you used a soft skill like let's say effective communication with a co-worker that you know how well you communicate with your teammates how helpful you are and then also tell them about your your, your technical skills so soft skills would be with regards to your communication and all of that and technical skills which could be anything that they let's say asked in the job description so let's say if in the job description it says you have to be very well versed with microsoft excel so tell them that okay how um you know 
hi, I'm very good at Excel. And this one time uh, there was this uh, data that was sent to us from a on short team and they were not able to work on it. But I quickly was able to, you know, clear all that data. The file was really in a bad shape. I was able to sanitize it due to my uh, great Excel skills and something that my managers really applauded me also. So, you know, tell them, give an example of a soft skill and a technical skill and technical skill usually make sure that if something is there in the job description and which you are good at you could link with that if however you're not good at excel then don't lie all right so what is your greatest strength few things to remember describe a relevant experience give some specific details but of course don't drag on and talk about your soft skills and technical skills and the most important part be confident but at the same time be humble you should not be uh, sounding very arrogant or bragging about it that okay i'm the best on this and you know everybody in the company comes to me for this work no don't say things like that even if it might be true because then you will sound arrogant all right another very uh, popular question which many employers ask is where do you see yourself in five years or ten years they could ask but usually it's five years. So here, the employers want to determine that how serious are you about your career and whether the goals that you have, you know, everyone has some goals for their career, whether that really matches with the goals for this job. Now, the employer is not asking you for a specific title. People say that, oh, in five years, I want to become a manager or I want to become the director of the company. No, they are not asking you that. Don't throw titles on the interviewer. Instead, they want to know how, how do you hope to accomplish it? What are your plans? If there's a particular role, let's say you want to be a manager, but don't say I want to be a manager. In order to be a manager, what are the things required? You need to have this much of experience. You need to be, let's say, great in Excel. You need to be, let's say, great in marketing. You need to be great in sales, whatever the role is. Um, if there are some additional certifications needed to be done, tell them that, you know, in the future, I'm planning to do these certifications, which will help me to achieve that goal, right? Now, the key to answering this question is to focus on what you can give to the employer or the role that they are offering. So here are the three tips. You need to break the time into chunks, right? Let them know what you might do in two to three year period. So in the first year, you will say that, okay, I'll be learning all this in the second to third year. I'll be applying all of that knowledge that I've now gained. I'll be, you know, focusing more on uh, the other part, you know, whatever it is. So this will help the interviewer to visualize what you are exactly describing. So take them through what you plan to do in the first few years and how you plan it to take up in a notch in the years after that, that what direction will you take exactly to achieve whatever is your goal. Talk about how your goals will help them. You know, you need to paint a vivid picture about the value that you plan to deliver within each of those two to three year chunks that you describe. You need to tell them that, you know, this particular thing that if I'm planning to do or deliver, that how you would do and how your goals is going to help the organization. Because if you, let's say, you say that, okay, I will be improving on sales and I really want to push on that um, aspect, then of course the company will be happy because if it's a sales job uh, or any other job wherein you have to, you know, be good at sales, then they will be like, okay, yeah, this would also help or benefit our organization. And like I said, avoid taking about or talking about any job title. Like don't say that in, the, in five years, I want to be the director, manager or partner of XYZ company. Don't, uh, you know, tell about those titles. Resist the urge to tell them what you want your position to be in these years because it can come as overly presumptuous so don't say that even though you might have this in your mind don't go out and actually say that so these are the things that you should keep in mind when this question is asked that what where do you see yourself in five years all right then a very important part what are the questions to ask at the end of an interview whenever the interview is done the interviewer will ask, okay, do you have any questions? And if you say, no, I don't, then it's it's really not a good thing to do. The interviewer will think, oh, really? You don't have any questions? Maybe you're not really interested in the job. So always have few questions prepared. And now this is my, usually the thing I tell them that you should have a question for with regards to culture. And of course, we're going to go to the culture, uh, the questions. Then 
you should have a question role specific and the third one is hesitation which we will cover in the next slide which is uh, which is we are going to see the you know the different types of question that you have hesitation is basically is the employer not sure about something uh, during this course of uh, the interview or the resume with regards to you because if it is then you can clarify that point itself right so make sure and i would also suggest that you know what happens is sometimes you you will pick a question from here and the interviewer during the interview might have answered that question let's say for example first one is culture right so let's say for example you would have thought that okay in the interview i'm going to ask this question what's your favorite part about working here in the organization but let's say during the interview the interviewer himself answer that uh, you know talking about the culture this organization is really great you know what's my favorite part about working here when the this question comes you're going to be like oh no i was going to ask this question and the interviewer is explaining his favorite part and you're not really listening because you're thinking oh no he asked my question now what should i ask what should i ask you will get nervous so always keep two to three questions ready because in case the interview answers that questions during the course of an interview you are not then you know super nervous and you get just are thrown back that okay now what should i ask so always keep few questions up your sleeve so first one is culture you know this is my favorite you can never go wrong with culture you could ask them what's your favorite part about working in that organization or what do you love most about your job because if you ask such questions it seems that this you are interested in knowing the culture of the organization and whether you will be a fit you know for that what makes people stay with this organization what are some biggest challenges or opportunities that the organization is facing or which department you are applying for you could ask them for that next months to a year or how would you describe the work environment here so these are some questions which are really good if you want to ask the interviewer and like i said always pick two questions from culture two from role specific and two from hesitation just keep them ready because if in case during the interview he answered three four questions at least you will by the end of it have one or two questions left then role specific again a very important area where when you ask questions with regards to your role specific it shows that yes you are keen and you are interested in knowing few things and you are really hoping to get that job so if you could ask like uh, what do you want the person in this position to accomplish in the first 30 or 60 or 90 days so it, you are showing that yes i really want to know what are the expectations that company has from me you could ask them how will my performance be, be measured in this position or you could ask them could you tell me what a typical day or week looks like in this position and this is something that you should probably ask the manager who's interview so usually there are few rounds of interview one would be your hr round so in your hr round it's always better to ask them with regards to culture role specific with regard should be asked from those managers who are you know so after your hr round is done usually there's a technical round in the technical round the people taking the interview are going to be the ones usually you're going to be who working with this is what usually happens at least in big four this is what happens so when i was also giving interviews we used to have one hr round now this was basic all about tell me about yourself your you know your strength weakness all of that they ask but when the technical round comes wherein the interviewer ask more technical questions so let's say if i'm applying for um, a financial accounting role the questions that they asked me were re relating to specific ifrs right uh, since i'm an accn but if uh, and that person who was asking me was working also in that department he could be your potential manager or your potential teammate right so to them you can ask role specific questions that you know you can you tell me what a typical day looks like you can also ask them culture questions there's no problem in that but what i'm trying to say is role specific is better to be asked from the managers or in the technical rounds rather than to your hr all right and the third category is like i said hesitation when the interview is done you know these are few questions like i've said i put here always ask at least one of this because then it gives you an opportunity to talk on something which let's say the interviewer was not sure about so for example let's say you could ask based on what we talk about today is there anything that is causing you hesitation about my fit for this position and let's say if the interviewer says yeah actually one thing you answered i'm little confused on that and they will say something and then you could you know give a justification on answer that oh actually what i was trying to say is and you know what happens and this is something which many people don't ask you know this hesitation part and if you do 
if there are any problems on the spot you can get it sorted right because the interviewer once the interview is over he's not going to call you back and be like you know we are fine with it but we have one problem no it's done that point they will just decide they'll either cross it or take it so make sure you're resolving it then only you know i have had a friend who once asked this question and the interviewer said that okay you know actually i'm hesitant about this and the person answered it and then they said you know what uh, i'm glad you asked this question because uh, uh, because it's now sorted and i don't think it's going to be a problem and I, I think you got the job i'll just you know do the paperwork so it's always good to clarify then and there do you have any hesitance about the qualification if let's say you applied for a job and there were few things that they ask you know qualification wise let's say they said college degree whichever degree or qual professional qualification you meet that but let's say some other uh, qualification let's say they said that you need to have uh, knowledge in sap sap but let's say you are not super well versed with it you know the basics so you can tell them that if you ask this do you have any hesitation about my qualification if they say yeah uh, we do need someone who uh, you know knows let's say sap or power bi so you can then tell them that you know what i'm planning to take a course on this online and i'm sure that you know by the time i'll be joining this organization i will be clearing clearing that I, or i'll be done with that course uh, my basics would be done i will receive a certification so you know tell if that question that time you ask them you know you can quickly think of an answer and tell them so that then if you would have let's say not ask this what would have happened they would have said oh this person doesn't know really sap let me you know just cancel them but since you showed this enthusiasm that oh i'm willing to learn i'm willing to go that extra mile they're going to be really happy is there anything i can clarify for you maybe they have some uh you know something in your resume or something which they're not sure about if you ask them then they're going to be like yeah actually i have this uh, problem or i have this query can you elaborate on that have i answered all of the questions that you have for me you should also ask them at the end that have i answered all of the questions that you have for me is there something else that you want me to speak on in detail is there anything that i can you know give a clarification on do let me know so you know these are few questions that you can definitely ask and like i said from each of these three categories from your right from your hesitation to your culture and role specific keep few questions always ready and you know during the interview or at the end of the interview whenever they say you have any question uh, because let's say if they're describing they could ask that you have any questions with regards to the organization as such so you can ask a culture question let's say they're describing the job right they they only tell okay in the first few days we expect you to do this so you have anything uh, to ask with regards to role uh, your role so then you could ask the next question that okay how will my performance be measured so keep two two questions i will always say ready from this because if in case the interviewer already answers one you are at least having some question left with you all righty so i am now open to any questions that you might have you could um, you know either type it in the chat box or unmute yourself and i'll be happy to answer is there any questions that anyone has feel free to ask any questions till that time i will put on this slide also which is uh, of course thanking you for joining this webinar and you know i really hope this was helpful and don't forget to follow fintram global on facebook instagram linkedin and youtube you know we are planning to come up with various sessions with regards to of course we had one for interview with regards to communication skills resume writing networking and so much more so you know make sure you're subscribing to our youtube channel and also following us on uh, instagram and linkedin because and facebook because there we will post the days this is happening the webinar and then you can register yourself and come and attend it and you know learn uh, from the industry experts about on all of these things so and if you have any queries or if you want to take any professional qualification uh, fintram global is of course uh, an institution which provides coaching for acca us cpa us cma acc is dip ifrs so you can definitely visit our website fintram.com and you know get in touch with the team you can also take demo classes for our acc course and you know then see for yourself so if you have any questions guys you can ask now if there are any questions with regards to today's webinar anything that you want to ask i hope this was helpful to you
and you know whenever next time you're going for an interview you're going to be more confident and like i said the tips that i shared the points that i shared uh, you know make sure you're keeping them on your mind and working on it work on your communication skill always practice before an interview you know preparing for an interview is very important like we prepare for our exams right in college or school we have to prepare for an interview so if you have someone your friend or family you know who could take a mock interview that's great if you don't have anyone that's fine practice by looking in a mirror that's absolutely fine or you could also just record yourself on phone and you can see that okay how much pause you were taking how did you answer you know all these things would really help when you finally go for the interview so if there are any questions guys please uh, put them in the chat box now otherwise i would end the session so i would just wait a minute more if there are any questions feel free to drop them in the chat box and like i said do not forget to follow us on those various platforms social media platforms we will be hosting many more webinars uh, in the coming weeks and months so make sure you follow us there so that you are you know getting that notification that okay this particular day is the webinar on a particular topic and you can then attend it all right i don't see any questions so uh, i think i'm going to end the webinar then thank you all for joining in and like i said uh, i really hope this was helpful and the takeaway the final takeaway i would say the three c is cool calm and confident remain cool calm and confident during an interview and like i said you are going to be a little bit nervous but at the end of the day don't show that to the interviewer remain cool calm and confident and then everything will work on and like i said clearing the first interview uh, is you know really pretty much i would say the chances of clearing first interview is very low so you are going to give many interviews in your life and that's absolutely fine i myself have given so many interviews when i was in college you know placements used to happen there were so many companies coming in so we used to go give interviews every day and that was absolutely fine you know you learn from all those experiences so if you do not clear an interview it's fine don't uh, you know be sad you know it's absolutely fine some day you will just practice and keep all these things you know on your mind all right since there are no more questions in the chat box i will then end this session thank you all for joining in uh, have a great evening bye bye Thank you.